station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Well, we are right in the middle of this heat wave as temperatures could even get a tick higher out there today. Could more records fall across the DMV? We'll have a check of your forecast in just a bit. And with all that dangerous heat, we're going to tell you ways to stay cool. And later, we're stretching your dollar. Kids eat free or reduce lunch in the Commonwealth. We're going to fill you in. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for the news at noon. I'm Mark Hall. Let's take a live look outside. My goodness, we saw record breaking heat for DC and we're going to be challenging records today as we look at the Kennedy Center. My goodness, you can just feel it outside. But meteorologist Damon Matson is here with a check on the forecast. Damon, it's hot, but we're getting a little bit of a break when it comes to humidity. Yeah, exactly right, Mark. That is the good news here. Once again, we are definitely experiencing that dangerous level of heat, but thankfully the humidity levels are in check enough, but not enough for this heat advisory to not be issued. Check it out out there, folks. A heat advisory was put into place by the National Weather Service just this morning, and it covers pretty much the entire DMV with the exception of far southern Maryland and also far western Maryland into to the higher terrain of Garrett County. Nonetheless, doesn't matter where you're at, it is going to be hot. Where we have this heat advisory in place, that is where we have the highest chance of seeing heat index values reaching 105 degrees. That is what it feels like to your body as you walk outside in this heat later on today. But even without that heat index, we are still talking about air temperatures that could hit close to 100 degrees once again later this afternoon. One, two, even closer to that four o'clock hours when we will really see this heat peaking once again and for for the second day in a row, third day in a row for some locations, we could see record high temperatures once again. And some of these rather old DC's record high for today's date was set back in 1881 at 97 degrees. We are likely to see that record fall later this afternoon. And as well, like I mentioned, many of these other records likely to go down. Hagerstown for certain there, the old record 93 degrees. And then BWI Dulles, the record at those two other major airports 96 and those go back to the 50s and the 80s. So yes, folks, we are right in the middle of this heat wave. But could we be talking about DC's first 100 degree day since 2016 on Wednesday? And hey, when do we finally cool things down? That's the big question, too. We'll have your full forecast in just a bit. All right, Damon, thank you. Record breaking heat again expected today, and it's going to impact local schools and businesses. DC News Now's Liberty Zabaya is at Kennedy Recreation Center Northwest with how the hot temperatures could affect your plans. Very hot today, and we've already seen the heat cancel some popular events like the Gaithersburg Labor Day Parade just yesterday. And DC is now opening cooling centers like the one behind me to help people beat the heat. So grab your sunblock. You will need it today and tomorrow are expected to be the hottest days of the week with highs reaching into the upper 90s and even triple digit heat in some areas. The record breaking temperatures even forced the cancellation of the 85th annual Gaithersburg Labor Day Parade out of an abundance of caution, but families should prepare for more possible cancellations at schools and local businesses ahead. The mayor of D.C. is activating a hot weather emergency through Thursday. D.C. is also extending pool hours to give families some relief from this heat. The district is also activating cooling centers and cooling buses for residents as well. Not a fan of the heat or the humidity at all, but just got to do what you just try to prepare as much as you can. Also, be sure to check on your elderly neighbors and pets and to find a cooling center near you. Just head to our website at DCNewsNow.com and we'll have the district's interactive map posted for you there. For now in Northwest DC, Liberty Zabala, DC News Now. All right, Liberty, thank you. An investigation is underway in Prince George's County, Maryland, after a video surfaced on social media. It shows one of their police officers embracing and kissing someone in the back seat of a crew police cruiser. Now, the department has released a statement on social media platform X saying that PGPD Executive Command 
is aware of a video circulating with social media on social media with one of our officers. As soon as we became aware, we opened an investigation to determine the circumstances. And additional information will be released, released once investigated and confirmed. We will continue to follow the story both on air and online at dcnewsnow.com. Well, this afternoon, people living in Alexandria are getting ready for a first look at new zoning changes. The new zoning could change the shape of their neighborhoods. Our Randy Bass is outside Alexandria City Hall looking ahead to tonight and breaking down what it all means. Yeah, these zoning for housing changes are set to be released tonight between 5 and 7 p.m. here at City Hall during this evening's City Council meeting. Those changes may mean more affordable housing here in the city of Alexandria, but of course, some people are on board while others are not. Those expected changes would expand the number of homes and the types of homes allowed to be built here within this city. In residential areas, that means more apartment, multifamily, and townhouse style homes standing alongside single family homes. A group called Coalition for Livable Alexandria claims the city will rush through zoning changes, saying the new framework goes as far as disenfranchising residents while giving a green light to overdevelopment and gentrification. Similar proposals passed in Arlington earlier this year. Activists there say they hope Alexandria isn't playing follow the leader. It was all about density, random density, density for density's sake. I don't know if I could ever afford a home in the city I grew up in. I'm definitely pro more affordable housing. Again, those proposed zoning for housing changes set to roll out here tonight at 5 p.m. here at City Hall. That meeting is open to the public both in person and online, but no public comment will be accepted at this time. In Alexandria, I'm Randy Bass, DC News Now. Randy, thank you. A woman is dead after a triple shooting in Aspen Hill. There's still no word on the condition of the other two victims. Officials say that it happened just after 7.30 last night on Punch Street. That's where police say they found a man and two women who were shot. Police say that they have a suspect in custody. Investigators say that the shooting was not random. And new details. The Giant on Alabama Avenue is replacing popular name brand items like Tide, Advil, and Colgate. They say it's an effort to stop shoplifting. Our Daniel Hamburg takes a closer look. This area is being recorded by video surveillance for your safety and security. The giant off Alabama Avenue in Southeast has already started removing name brand products from the shelves. Name brand is not only uh, the only thing that people steal. They steal giant brand stuff. It, it, it don't matter. A thief is a thief. Shelves are now barren from the deodorant aisle to where Tide detergent used to be. People come up to me, ask me, do I want to buy Tide, stuff like that? Of course, I'm going to buy it because it's much cheaper than they're going to sell in the store. Ron Hill, Dean's Professor of Marketing and Public Policy at American University, says retail theft is a real problem, but he says steps like these are discriminatory. I want to emphasize this idea of profiling and the idea of racial profiling, in other words, selecting stores or locations that are predominantly African American or predominantly what we think of as minorities. Um, has been very long standing, and a lot of stores have been sued because they did this. Starting Thursday, September 7th, receipts will be checked as people leave. Hopefully, they do. Giant says it's in an attempt to mitigate the unprecedented levels of product theft that has become unsustainable for our business. People that want to be thieves are going to go to places where they can steal. And so, if they reduce the number of branded items there, they're just going to go to other places altogether. Customers worry this is the first step to Giant possibly leaving altogether. They are talking about shutting too many stores down in this area. Reporting for DC News Now, I'm Daniel Hamburg. All right, Daniel, thank you. Mayor Bowser declared September as DC Preparedness Month. It ties into National Preparedness Month, reminding people and businesses the importance of being prepared for an emergency or disaster. Well, a number of events will be held across the DMV to help people get prepared. Well, in the district, the office of the chief technology officer will host four internet safety workshops for senior citizens. And they say that the workshops will teach seniors how to stay safe while surfing the web and using their cell phones. Those workshops will take place between September 14th and September 28th. In Maryland, the Office of Emergency Management and Homeland Security will partner with the Department of Health and Human Services to share information to seniors and events will be held at seven senior centers on Friday this month and all events will run from 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. A list of the dates and times can be found on the Emergency Management Office's Facebook page. And in Virginia, 
Officials in Prince William and Arlington counties reminding people that they should be in their that they should be at the, what they should have, pardon me, in their emergency kits. This includes a three-day supply of food and water, extra batteries, a first aid kit with a plan for storing any prescription medication, any important documents like your social security cards. And if you own a vehicle, make sure that you have extra gas and a bright colored cloth and jumper cables. Well, Hyattsville, Maryland native Francis Tiafo gearing up for the U.S. Open quarterfinals with the win. He would reach the semifinals for the tournament for the second year in a row. No American has won the event in the last two decades. Tiafo faces off with another American, Ben Shelton. That starts tonight around 8.15. And ahead tonight in Tech Talk, you will do you know the do's and don'ts of social media in D.C. courts. Well, following a recent arrest and a guilty plea, we're breaking down some of the rules that you may not know before you step inside for a hearing or join a grand jury. I want to persuade uh, all those residents, uh, not only in the district, but across the DMV, that when they get that jury summons in the mail or by of email, to really take it seriously and to understand the, the importance of them to serve and to serve in the right ways and for the right reasons. And stay tuned for Tech Talk beginning later at 4 here on DC News Now.